Tottenham, well, you've blown a bit hot and cold this year, haven't you, really? Um, there was the win at Man United, which was impressive, of course. And then you let everybody down on the South Coast the following week, uh, including all Crystal Palace fans, as you were 2 nil up at Brighton and then uh, spectacularly lost 3-2. Um, we dislike that lot with a passion on the South Coast, almost as much as you dislike the red half of North London. So, look, um, I think you've had a mixed season. You won well last week. I think the, the player that we would always look out for at the moment is, of course, Son. Hi guys, Ian Noble here from the Red and Blue Review Crystal Palace podcast. Thanks for inviting us on to the Spurs chat podcast to talk about the game this coming Sunday at Sellers Park in the Premier League. Well, you've asked me a load of questions and I've got them in front of me, so I'll do my very best to answer them. Um, first up, of course, what have we made of our season so far? Well, I can only say that it's been like chalk and cheese compared to the end of last season. Of course, last season, those seven games undefeated, six wins out of seven, uh, left us hailing Oliver Glasner as some kind of hero. And uh, even though we lost players in the summer, um, do you know what? We went into this season full of optimism, but eight games in and without a single win and just three points on the board leaves us uh, in the relegation zone. And supporting Crystal Palace has always been a bit of a roller coaster ride. But if we had the highs at the end of last season, certainly we've got the lows at the moment and we're hanging on tight, hoping for our first win at some point. And it might well come this coming Sunday. So it hasn't been great so far. The performances haven't been too bad, to be fair. We haven't been thrashed. Um, we've lost by more than one goal just the once uh, when we were behind against West Ham and we were going for that equalising goal and they called us on the counter. But look, you know, it's been, we've been unlucky a few times. We've, we've done well in certain games. Uh, we've got a point at the bridge, which we don't usually do. And um, we drew with Man United. But um, losing narrowly to Liverpool the other week, you know, we felt we could have got something out of that one. Um, Monday night wasn't pretty under the sky cameras. That's the one that really hurt the most, I think. The most recent game away at Forest. So we're in the bottom three. Um, that's a fact. And we have to do something about it real soon. In terms of Oliver Glasner, what have we made of him? Well, you know, as I said earlier, he's he's been a held a hero. And I think the end of last season has bought him time this year. Um, if it had been, if he'd come in in the summer and we'd had this kind of start, everyone would have been screaming for his head already. Um, a bit like Frank de Boer um, those years ago when he lost his first four games and we replaced him with Roy Hodgson. So, you know, basically the end of last season has bought Glasner time. And um, I think he'll be given it to at least Christmas if we don't turn things around before then. Um, Pre-season, we were just saying stuff like this could be our first ever qualification for Europe. Basically, it was cloud cuckoo land. It was never going to happen, really. Uh, and um, now we're just thinking, well, if we finish in the in mid-table again, like we have done for the last 10 or 11 years, then that'll be a satisfactory season. Of course, we're still in the Carabao Cup. Um, we go away to Aston Villa next week, who have got their mind on, on, on bigger prizes. So we hope that they'll field an understrength side and we can progress to the last eight there. So you never know. Maybe there's a cup final this season as well for us, as well as surviving in the Premier League. Tottenham, well, you've blown a bit hot and cold this year, haven't you, really? Um, there was the win at Man United, which was impressive, of course. And then you let everybody down on the South Coast the following week, uh, including all Crystal Palace fans, as you were 2 nil up at Brighton and then uh, spectacularly lost 3-2. Um, we dislike that lot with a passion on the South Coast, almost as much as you dislike the red half of North London. So, look, um, I think you've had a mixed season. You won well last week. I think the, the player that we would always look out for at the moment is, of course, Son. Um, he was missing in Europe. Um, I'm recording this on Friday morning. He didn't play at all last night. And 
Um, if he's missing at the weekend, we'll be delighted about that. But look, you've got quality all over the pitch. You've got um, FPL assets. I've got Johnson in my team. I hope he has a quiet week this week. I'm quite happy for him to blank um, for me in FPL. Uh, but you've got quality all over the pitch and, you know, you, you'll do well. You'll finish in the top four or five for sure and have another good season. So we fear everyone, really, when a Tottenham player's on the ball. You know, you're better than us, player for player. I don't think many of our players get into your side at the moment. If you'd asked me that last season, I would have said a few more. But other than the obvious, Eze, Mark Gahey, of course, um, you know, they're probably the only two that get into your side just now um, with the way we're playing. Um, who to look out for? Well, um, Eze, of course, is the one. Um, you know, he's the one that can make a difference. He's not playing very well at the moment, but he can turn a game uh, just like that. Uh, such a brilliant footballer. And the other one to look out for, I think, is someone you'll know quite well, uh, is Eddie Nketiah. Um, he hasn't scored for us in the Premier League yet, but look, you know, he's going to score at some point and he's hungry for goals. Both came close at Forest on Monday night, um, but both blanked. Um, this fixture last season, well, um, you beat us narrowly at Selhurst about 12 months ago, uh, despite a Jordan I who won the goal, I think. And then in North London, well, we took the lead with an Ezra free kick and then you turned it around late on. So you had the bragging rights last year. We never really do well against Tottenham. Any point against Tottenham for Crystal Palace is a good point. And so, look, you know, we'll be hoping for um, a draw at best, probably, um, this coming uh, Sunday. Um, other games down the years that are worth mentioning, I suppose. Um, yeah, the the Edward Brace off the bench uh, for his debut when we won 3-0 a few years back. Um, then there was an occasion, I think it was Alan Pardew's first game in charge at Selhurst, January. It was a tea time kickoff under the lights. And uh, I remember it well because I'd been on Soccer AM that morning with a group of Palace lads and we'd had a great day out. And then we went on to Selhurst in the afternoon and we, we won the game. So that was a good one. And then there was also, of course, um, Martin Kelly scoring at the lane in the FA Cup. So lots of memories um, of games down the years against Tottenham Hotspur. And I should, of course, mention the first ever game, the first ever competitive game at the new stadium when uh, you won 2-0. And I think until last season, I hadn't sc seen a score at, at the new ground. Um, I've seen just, we, you know, we scored nil every time we turned up there. So um, listen, we hope it's a bit different for us at Selhurst uh, this coming weekend. Um, I think the game is going to be fairly close. As I said earlier, we haven't been thrashed this year. We haven't lost heavily to anyone. There's not going to be much in it. I always say that the margins in the Premier League are really, really fine. So look, you know, it's going to be a tight game. I'm going for a one-all draw. If you offer it to me now, I'll take it. So uh, there we go. Um, guys, I uh, wish you all the best, uh, apart from this weekend, of course. And um, enjoy the game at Selhurst. Uh, always a warm welcome in the Arthur Waite for you in the away stand, I'm sure, uh, in SE25. So, yeah, the Red and Blue Review podcast. I've been Ian Noble. Um, do listen out for us. Do follow us on social media. Um, we're the voice for Crystal Palace fans across uh, South London. Thanks very much.